everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Last Call BBS, which is uh, the last game by Zektronics, which I, I guess for some people is a little bit more impactful. For me, I just played Opus Magnum. I've tried a number of their other games, but they're always a little too complex for me. I think I might want to actually go back, but so this is their last game. Uh, the lead guy, I guess, is going off to like teach and figured it was a, just a good time to retire. And you know what? Sometimes just exiting the games industry is kind of a good thing, uh, especially on a high note. So this looks very much like kind of a 80s, 90s callback mini game compilation with a lot of really neat ideas, programming puzzles and uh, Gundam buildings. Let's dive in. Welcome, ask and ye shall receive. You shall receive, sorry, not ye. This is my old Sawayama machine. I'll set it up like it was back then. I even got the BBS running again, so you can dial in and download more of these retro games. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm still getting used to that term. Anyway, the story of all this stuff is also a story about people, so I wrote a few notes about how I came across these things and whatever else came to mind as I was getting it ready. You might find it interesting. You might not. It's there either way. Have fun. So that's welcome. And then we have an address book. Okay. Uh, can I just... Yeah, I can minimize that. Or I could close it. Seeing as I can pull it up whenever I want. So we just have solitaire. Here's the thing. This is literally the first time I've ever played solitaire, so I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh... Uh... I... Uh... I think you're supposed to be sorting the cards, yes? <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know. So, looks like you can only move... Whatever's on... The end. For better or worse. Unless maybe if they're all hooked up. Yeah, because it doesn't look like it can move any of these other ones. I can also do this for whatever good this does me. Uh, and there, there's these here. I'm just going to close this before I embarrass myself further. My mother used to play solitaire, but I'd never bother to learn the rules. Oh, oh view, view the rules. Stack cards by alternating colors and decreasing values. Any card or stack can be moved into an empty column. Clicking on the deck will deal additional cards three at a time. When the deck is empty, it can be used to store a single card. To win, stack all of the cards on the left. Buy suit. From east to king. Stack cards by alternating colors and decreasing values. So like that. Oh, but I can't do that. So I'd have to go find like a five somewhere. Uh, huh. Oh, but it only, it only fits if I do a decreasing value. I see. Can I put things... No. So we're supposed to stack them into the, um... This is... Real weird. But kind of cool. But also real weird. Okay, so I guess I can put that there. This gets me a four. What does the four do? I can put the three here. I can't pick up the stack. So, I see you can pick up the stack if it's valid. But that's not valid because it's not alternating. I get ya. I understand some of this. Uh, let's see, I can also... I wonder if I just deal myself out the entire deck and work from there. Is there a downside? I don't think so. Okay, so now I can store cards. And figure the rest of this business out. Oh no. I screwed up. Alright, whatever. <laughs> let's not play solitaire. So let's check the system. Are these just basic settings? Uh, 500 XB. I don't even know what XB is. Video. Yeah, it's kind of a neat way of doing your, your settings for your game. Not that any of this matters. Okay, so we're going to close out of that. Let's check Drive. What do we got? Netronics Connect. Dial Last Call BBS. This is kind of what we had to deal with when I was a kid. 
It's great. Okay, Sysop the Barkeep. File list. Come in, take a seat, and let the barkeep serve up something you ever, you never knew you needed. Press a key, one through seven, to know more about a file. I started the PBS thinking nobody would really use it. So imagine my surprise when the first user, user dialed in, then the next, then the, then the next. I like to think it was a big community success story, although you can't, you can't argue with the free downloads either. People used to call that wares, and the computer industry called it illegal piracy. I don't try to justify it. I just wanted to share the cool stuff I found. A lot of which you couldn't get any other way. For a while, Last Call was about as big a BBS as you could find in the Kansas City area. That was important in the era of long-distance telephone fees. So, what do we have? Dungeons and Diagrams, 20th Century Food Court, Steed Force, Hobby Studio, uh, Kobufudo Solitaire. Interesting, there's a different one. Zabigak, The Forbidden Path, Hack Match ROM, and Emulator, and Chip Wizard Professional. Let's start with the ho hobby studio. You're going to have to be a fan of the Steed Force TV show. You even know what it is to enjoy this model building simulator toy. Snap pieces together and paint them with different colors. Fix decals if you want. Have fun. There's no particular goal here, apart from getting to play with cool robots without needing to spend hundreds of dollars to import the real deal. Oh, might as well download it. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, there's a reason why I got solitaire going on. All right, let's try this again, and let's see if I can do this right. So I can put that there. Uh, considering aces can kind of be free, that frees that up. So put this here. Uh, six there, three here. I won't take it. Weird. Okay. I'll figure this out somehow. Uh, well, actually, this is kind of working. Uh, let's see if I can... Oh, but it has to alternate color. And we've pretty much exclusively got reds. So I think I am going to need need some backup in here. Uh, Cause yeah, I can't free any of these cards at the moment. But that's not an enduring limitation. I got a red five here, but I don't think I can do much with that. So let's try and pull that out. Let's two end up here. I don't know why that does what it does. Okay, yeah. Because I can do this. Interesting that I can't put that on the 9. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Or something. Oh, well, Seed Force is done. Oh, cool. Closing it, or minimizing it, hides it. Okay, Steed Force has been saved to drive zero. Reach your download quota. Hang up and call back in 1446 minutes. All right. So I guess we're kind of stuck with what we've got here. Steed Force Hobby Studio. One of my coworkers used to enjoy this robot cartoon show called Steed Force, which he first saw on TV growing up in Brazil. Later he had the idea it would be fun to build some of the models with his son, but importing kits from Japan was impossible unless you were willing to pay crazy amounts of money to have someone ship, uh, someone there ship them to you. This was before you could just order whatever you wanted on the computer. But there, but instead he made something just as cool, or maybe even better, a complete model building simulation based on the show. Okay, so we can, oops, can I go back? New tips, browse collection. Okay, so we can build quite a lot of... Okay, we can build a couple of these guys. I wonder if we get access to more. View tools, manual, decals, animated GIF, neat. Well, I could make the most uh, basic looking Gundam, but I'm gonna go with this blocky sucker. Oh. I know some friends that have gotten into this kind of thing. Okay, and I can do tab. 
Let's see. I know some friends that have gotten into this kind of thing. And it's something that I specifically would love to get into as well. Yeah, Shell made a mini model for me uh, a while back because I was busy and it was just sitting around in a box. And she's like, yeah, you know, we should put this together. And I was like, yeah, we probably should. Uh, so she put the mini model together. Uh, it was, let's see. Oh, QW pin wash colors. Yeah, I don't know what tape is going to be for. I don't know what half of these are going to be for. Tips. Shift from grabbing a part to detach it from other parts. Tab to open and close the menu. Using masking tape, hold shift to adjust the tape's position. Tweezers to remove masking tape that you no longer need. Ah. Pin wash to darken panel lines after painting your model. Press space to quickly open and close the instructions window. Shift when grabbing a part to detach it from other parts. Okay, so we're just looping. And manual. Okay, assembly. Uh, are there any other pages to this? Okay, how do I put a tool away? I guess I got to do that. Okay, so we've got... Oh. oh, and it just disappears when you do that. Okay, put that away. Put this away. And none of this is going to be helpful, is it? Wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It makes sense, but oof. Well, maybe we should start with the things that I recognize rather than the things that I don't. So I'm just going to pile a bunch of junk over here and then figure it out. Because, like, I've, I see a lot of these seem to be like leg parts and hips, maybe. Maybe. Can I move the ruler? No, I cannot. Okay. This sucker is huge. Ah, uh, hmm. Well, do I just start snipping? I think we do. I... This is really cool. I've always wanted to play some, like, Gundam Buildery things. Oh, right, I was talking about potentially buying my own kits of this kind of thing. Uh, we bought a bunch of, uh, Mystic Knight Rare Earth mecha, uh, models. And they're coming in the mail at some point soonish. Uh, I should probably check the delivery, delivery information on that. Oh, that's interesting. In the layered sy system, the parts kind of disappear into the background as soon as you get rid of the framing. Neat. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do we do this? Because that hooks together. There we go. Now, unless I'm mistaken, these parts hook together. But we need the other bottom bit to get access to it. Or it could be this. Probably missing something. Yeah, because that's not hooking together. Maybe that's not the end of the world. Maybe it is. Alright, I'm just going to keep putting bits together. And we'll figure it out. Because I think this is a little bit more self-explanatory than I thought it was. Kinda. 
Let's see. Let me figure out. Because the other thing is, looking at this, you can kind of figure out what parts go where. So this, for example, actually goes here. There we go. Okay, this, yeah, this is a lot easier to figure out than I thought it would be. I'm still horribly, horrendously lost. Oh god, what the hell are these things? You know what? Maybe I shouldn't do this. Or maybe I should collect them all down at the bottom. Oh, are these the missiles? I bet they're the missiles for the rack. I think I did a made a grave mistake cutting all of those out. I probably should have just left them attached till the very end. But instead, you know, willful me just kind of goes along and does it. It's fine. This is kick-ass. Like, nightmarish, yes. But cool. Okay, so what does this even correspond with? Not a clue. I almost kind of wish I could click and drag to move these things around. But I can't. Question. Okay. So we can we can deal with these. Oh, I don't even have to click to get it precise. They just slot right in. Rad. So I don't I don't have to worry about this being heinous in the slightest. Now I guess to some degree what I should have done was painted some of these parts, but honestly, I'm more interested in just putting this thing together. Oh. I mean, that's kind of handy. Okay. Yeah, because I can just slap those around. I think this gets added later. These big... big things... Yeah, I don't know yet. Well... Do we just... keep putting stuff places? Because what we need are... Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there's anything that corresponds with any of these. Nope. So we're just going to end up with a pile of pieces and no way around it. It's okay. I'll make it work or something. This is easy to cut out all the bits. It's just sorting this is going to be heinous. Oh, there's the pipe bits that I was looking for. And needed? Okay. Yeah, uh, let's see, where's the other one? Oh, here it is. Yeah, because I can still slap these together. This is not perfect. These hook into, actually, the bottom of this? They do. But I guess not yet. Because, yeah, it definitely looks like it hooks in there. We have the rest of this cod piece going, but can't do too much with that. Let's take a look at assembly. These must be the feet. Oh, and these are different uh, painting options. Yeah, so this is... This is the foot model. Which actually is kind of useful. I just have to freaking find all the bits now that I've completely jumbled the heck out of it. These are arm related, so we might not have to worry about that too much. But there. Wait.
yeah, there should be enough parts. Where is this? Okay. I'm getting it. Kind of. Now let me see, what else am I missing? Because I got these. Ah, this. Left in there. See? Feet are coming together. Now we just gotta find these. Or maybe not. Maybe it's these. Oh. There we go. Okay, where's the last one? I have lost it in this labyrinthine mess. But I didn't lose it for long. Okay, uh, let's see. Next order of business. This looks like this goes here. Can I not slap these on yet? Nah. Okay, so the feet are done. And this is done. The arms look still pretty, pretty scuffed. But maybe I can get a hand in. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh. Still won't take. So clearly it's got to have a little bit more than this. Okay. Let's maybe just rethink, look elsewhere. Maybe find the other hand. I, we're definitely getting a, a lot further in on, in on this than I thought we were going to. It's, this is really compelling. It might be boring as heck to anybody else watching this, but I love it. Okay, do we free these parts? I mean, considering we've we've put this this clunker together a lot faster than I thought. Yeah, I guess it's time. Oh, it's probably these hand shields that need to go on before it hooks in. I'd like this. I think the one problem I always have with these like compilation packs is you always end up with like one or two of those games that are just like real bangers. And there's no like deeper, longer, bigger version of it. I'm trying to think of a good example of this. There we go. I'm mildly coming up with blanks. Still not taken for whatever reason. And that's not taken either. Uh, uh. Boy, it's gonna be hard for anything goes here. Oh, these need these need side panels. Okay. At least I know what I can do with these. They pretty much done. It feels like it, but they're not. Oh. That's because they're not. Not even close? Question mark? I mean, maybe they're close. I don't fully know. No, these don't jam in here. Okay. Now those don't connect. Why though? And yeah, I can take them apart, but that's not good. Feels like a number of these should. Oh, 
There we go. There we go. Okay, we're making spiffy progress. But I should have painted this. Yeah, it feels like I'm missing something on the feet. But I don't think I am. Yep, I'm not. I'm just missing how they factor in. Okay. Got it. So we've got the we got the legs going. So we have these big honking things that are supposed to fit in here somewhere. But I guess they don't yet. Neither does this, which means there's got to be a series of like pins or hookups that somehow hold it together. Well, at least we got that now. Okay. Expecting it to slot in. Oh, it's like a fair bit further down. What? Yeah, so it's supposed to be like around here-ish. Or lower. But clearly I'm missing something. This would not surprise me. Hmm. At least we found the head. Good old process of elimination. And yeah, the fists don't... Oh. Because these need to be slotted on. That's why the fists aren't connecting. Okay. So these are the upper shoulder pads. If we go back to assembly. I think this is probably the top point. Okay, these do these do hook up on the sides. Necessarily know where these go yet. Oh, oh, these are much lower. Yeah, okay. These most assuredly fit together. fit on yet, but I guess I shouldn't expect that yet. There we go. That's where those pieces are. Okay. I love Legos. It was very much my childhood when I was younger. Nope, those still aren't slapping on. Means I'm missing something in the area. Okay. Uh... that everything I think that's everything on the arms so where do the ah that's where these vents go okay what about this stuff if not there there okay and what about these holy shit what are these and where do they go so small.
आए I don't I don't know Oh, never mind I do They're so small but Oh, and this is why I can't hook on the pipe things Cuz I needed those on Okay, what about these? What? Uh, <laughs> oh, they went on the knees. All right. It's done. You might wonder why I included this program since it's not really a game in the strict sense of the word. It's more like a toy or some kind of weird simulator without any particular goal. I guess the reason is I was so impressed by the lengths this guy went to making all of this art and everything, and releasing it all for free just because he wanted to build some model kits with his kid. I think that's a great expression of the creativity of the early computer era. There weren't as many rules or commercial pressures. You could just make a fun toy, and that was the whole point. Okay. Interesting. Okay, browse tools. Paint. Yep. Oh boy, I really should have painted this a long time ago, but I didn't know what I was doing and now I do. And whatever, it's gonna be like gold. Except for that one foot. And then like, the head's going to be kind of bluish. Gosh, this looks ghoulish. Oh well. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I knew I was never gonna be able to do this properly. View box. I wonder if there's a way to, like, reset. What an absolutely sick little toy here. But let's close it. Let's try something else. Okay, back to listing. Uh, let's do dungeons and diagrams. The point of this game is to figure out what the map looks like by filling in squares according to the numbers at the top and side while making sure you follow the rules. It's a fun puzzle and, a good, uh, and good to kill time with. Stick it to the man by putting it on your work terminal if you don't think the boss will see. Any trouble you get in at the office is your own responsibility. Sure. Alright, back to Solitaire. At least for a moment. I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Because if I can free this... Then I'm fine. We have a four. But I can't stick that anywhere. And if I had an open spot, I could put this queen and jack on top of this king at the very least, which would give me an ace. Uh, which would actually kind of work out really well in my favor. I just can't get there. Why is there this two here? Why does this happen? I don't know. move the rest of these because they're all stacked wrong. Oh. Oh. The ace of spades is underneath. So it actually clears them out. That's interesting and appreciated. I'm just still not sure if I can do anything with this. Oh, up. Well. Dungeons and Diagrams. Ooh, this actually looks kind of fun. What? View Tutorial. Hark Brave Adventure. In this game, you must use logic to- Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Is it just Picross, but with dungeons? It's just Picross, but with dungeons, I think. Treasure rooms are always 3x3 three three with a single entrance and a single chest. Chest can be in any of the spaces. Every monster is a dead end. Every dead end contains a monster. All empty spaces connect to a single continuous shape. Diagonal spaces are never considered adjacent. Hallways are always one space wide. Outside of treasure rooms, there will never be a 2x2 two two block of empty spaces. 
They solve the walls correctly to solve the puzzle and unlock more. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, let's see. So all monsters are dead ends. Well, we know for a fact there's four here. So that's easy enough. And all monsters are dead ends. So that has to be that. This has none. Oops. So let's go with that. Uh, let's see. There has to be five here. And three here. So we're getting pretty close to emptying this one out. Okay, so it's not quite Picross. It's got its own weird rules. And it's going to take me a little bit to get used to it because I'm, I'm thinking of this in Picross terms and it's not. Three, four, so it's an eight. So this one is almost an entirely, um, just one long wall, but there's an entrance somewhere that I have to find. I guess actually looking at this, these, these have to be like this. Every empty space has to be connected to another empty space. There are no, uh, there are no pockets. Okay, so these all have to be empty. Which means we know where this is. Which means these are all empty. Uh, we know these all have to be empty. Can I, ah. Put that there, so that means this has to be filled out. This can only have two in it, so they've got to be, ooh, no, 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 no. I gotta check something. Okay. Treasure rooms are three by three with a single entrance and a single chest. Okay, so that means this has to be here. It's the only spot in this section where that can be. Conjecture says it's this. I wonder, some of these might have multiple solutions. We'll see how it goes. This is neat though. Dungeons and Diagrams is a fun little puzzle game that spread throughout the office. It was an older version, uh, it was an older version of this with simpler graphics. Someone gave it to me who got it from his friend, who got it from a different friend, and so on. That's how things spread. The guy who made it was in Finland, Finland, but nobody knew how to contact him. We all would have liked to send him some money, but how? Eventually, I was able to make contact by going through a connection in the Sawayama Nordic office. Such a small world back then. I mean, they're not wrong. Okay. Like, there was, I don't know, early internet was kind of special. It had, it had its negatives. It had a lot of them, but there was always kind of this feeling of, like, ingenuity and not, uh, I don't want to say, like, it wasn't restrained by corporate or economic requirements. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but, like, nowadays everything has to be for money because everybody's too poor to do anything else. It's very difficult to just make a game for fun. Uh, and the people that have enough money to do such a thing generally aren't making it for fun. They're making it for money. I don't know. It's... the just doesn't feel good. So, what other rules do we have here? Because I think every critter has to be a dead end. But, it doesn't have to be like this. I think. How could you dead end with this guy? Because you could have the entrance from here. You could have the entrance from below. And so this would have to be here. So we don't actually know how this guy is in, entrapped yet. <sighs> hmm. Okay. And we know this, for example, is in a treasure room, but we don't actually know where the treasure room is. This one... We need, w oh. No. These have to be empty. Or this has to be empty, which gives me exactly six spaces. So that gives us a little bit of an option here. Huh. 
Aha. Uh -huh. The treasure room, okay. I think treasure rooms are going to remain deregistration. Dungeons and Diagrams, 1991. Ilka Haikonen. Viljakla, Finland. Registered to Cracked by Dansk Division. Do not redistribute. Neat. Uh, let's see. Oh, and you can undo. Not that it matters too much. Every empty space on a map is part of either a treasure room or a hallway. Treasure rooms are always 3x3 three three with a single entrance and a single chest. Every monster is a dead end. Every dead end contains a monster. Okay. So we know this guy's in a dead end. And he's backed up against a wall. The only thing we can say for certain is that this is locked off. Because this can only have one entrance. Can't be there. I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Which means... This has to be empty. Which means... That's that. This is all closed off. Which means these have to be closed off. Which means these are open. Now, obviously I'm making some assumptions here. But the nice part is I think I can just reconfigure it based on the rules. If I'm wrong. Uh, let's see. This has to have f five spaces. Ugh. Well, these have to be open. So there have, have to be two closed spaces here. Ooh. Unless... I might have goofed some of this. I'll have to have to move this around. This is tough. Well, at least we know those have to be enclosed. Probably means once again these have to be enclosed. has to be this. At least with my current layout. Yeah, this is legitimately tough. Uh, let's see, because I can only fit one more block in here. I think it's got to be right here. We're good. Okay, there we go. This is neat. Weird, but cool. It, it definitely follows Picross logic, logic th uh, theming. But at the same time, it's it's kind of its own thing. I wonder if there are multiple solutions for each. I don't actually know. Call back in five minutes. Cripes. Okay. Well, we know this is empty. We know this is a separate monster. This can only have one. What we're looking for are the really obvious ones, like this one, uh, which gives us kind of an in. Let's see, this one can only have two. This can only have one. This is a treasure room, but that's not that helpful. There are two openings on this to find. And we know this guy is a dead end. So at the very least, these have to be locked off because all monsters are dead ends. means that has to be there. These guys are all properly accounted for. 
Uh, let's see, and there can be no 4x4 four four space, so this has to be filled in. Don't know about these. This five, so we have to find one more open space in this section. And considering there's a treasure chest here, these have to be locked off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to think about that later. But if, if this treasure chest has to be in a 3x3 three three and you have to have a bunch of blocks here, then this is closed off here, which means this is probably closed off. Which means these are all open. Obviously, once again, a lot of conjecture. But it's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, let's see. So we have a 6 here. We know where one of the two empty spaces uh, can be. This could be uh, we this could be empty, and then fifty percent of these are are open. I'm thinking this has to be we have to have at least one here because you can't have a three by three or a two by two, so this has to be here to keep within the rules. Same thing with honestly these spots. I mean, I no. It has to be exactly like this. Mm, no. Nope, that doesn't work. Think this works? Okay. Okay, it doesn't like that. But why? Which of these is breaking the rules? Unless this guy has new rules that I don't know about. Uh, I'm... I'm almost wondering if I actually found an alternate solution here that the game... Like that the game doesn't track or wasn't aware of and so while it's completely valid it's illegal unless I'm doing something wrong because this is a dead end all of the tiles have been placed properly I I don't know alas the game is too new so I'm not actually seeing anything okay good it looks like I can just leave this here and come back to it. Because, uh, yeah, I, I'm not seeing anything strictly illegal with what I've put down. So either this is a solution that just wasn't considered. I messed up and somebody in the YouTube comments will tell me. Or, I don't know, maybe somebody will put together a guide with all the proper solutions. And I can check against what they had. Doesn't matter, let's check one more game before we go away. Okay, so we did st Steed Forest. Honestly, I'm thinking is a big ugh, the Forbidden Path. Let's grab that one. Grow weird flesh sculptures in order to escape death. I don't think many people played this game when it came out. 
The ideas and presentation are pretty out there. Honestly, honestly though, it's worth the experience, even if, even if it's a little hard to figure out. Lots of folks are scared by the idea that they might not be around forever, are you? How far would you go in a quest for immortality? Huh. Oh boy, that's a three minute one. Well, it's what I got solitaire for, if I can figure out how to solitaire. Because yeah, there's a jack that I could get to. There's the jack. Okay. And the 10. And... Oh, it doesn't... Okay, that frees that. We can move this here. We've got a red 9. Uh, but... We can actually do something with these. Alright. I'm rolling. I'm not rolling that comfortably, but I am rolling. Okay, we can move those onto the red king. Move the king up here. Uh, let's see. Do we have an, a black eight? Yes. Okay, these are going shockingly swell. We need this six. Honestly, I'm just going to stack these over just to give me a little bit more room. Ah, uh, jeez. It's certainly shifted slightly in my favor. This whole stack is pretty much clear to go. Huh. I think I understand how Solitaire works. I don't think I'm playing particularly well, but I understand how it works. So we can slap these over here at the very least. Gets us a queen. Ah, uh, hmm. I can store a single card here. So, all I need is to free some of these. So I can put the queen back here, move this out, gets the ace and then the two out. What can I do with this red queen? Currently not much. And a red 10. these games warn you if you can't do anything. I hope so. Yeah, we need this red six. Well, here's what I can do. Store that, cycle a couple of those. Move a couple of these, okay. Cycle these over. Black nine. Uh, let's see. Red queen. Well, shit's happening. Uh, let's see. Red six. Move that over. I don't think I can actually do much with half of these. Uh, I think I beat it. Huh. I know I'm going to get some angry comments on understanding Solitaire, but at the same time, for my, what, second attempt? Uh, with minimal understanding? I, I did it. Rad. Sayama computers weren't too common in the West, but people who got them were fanatically devoted to them. They were a little pricier, but they're classy too. Classy in a way computers today just aren't. You can tell the designers really considered the whole experience. I was into computers for a while before I got my first Sawayama, but I I was really hooked by this little machine. In fact, I loved it so much I applied for a job at the company as a regional sales rep. I was as surprised as anyone when I got it. That's fun. Alright. And we have Baguette. Ooh, this one looks sick. I mean, this whole game is incredible. I really need to put some more time into, um... I mean, just Zactronic games in general. I think I might do a, a one-off on every single one of them and then go back and play some. I Infinite Factory has been the one that I've always wanted to play. And Exapons. Anyway, Element... Uh, element 1? Or... I think it's Element 1. Now joining our library. You cannot trace us, you cannot find us. We were always here. Praise for those who walk the forbidden path. Okay. 
That's fun. So it's it's the crack screen. I remember those. Well, this looks sick. Pilgrim who seeks the forbidden path. Do not be afraid. All will be revealed. You have suffered much to come here. The fear of death has compelled you. Now you will build the immortal body. Now you will work the immortal flesh. The pixel art on this game is really impressive. Like every single one of the games that has a unique and distinct art style, and yet each and every one of them works like really well. What the fuck? What am I doing? Grow the seed into this. Oh, I see. So I'm just supposed to match. Wait, are all of these identical? They are. so confused. I am so... I... I don't even begin to understand this one. This one looks like interesting programming. The only immediate problem with it is that I don't know. So we have ignore, divide, spe specialize. Reaction, target seed, skin. D wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. But we don't have any of these. So... I'm, like, lightly programming it. So this is the origin point. Interesting. programming. Okay. So I think I've figured it... Okay. So this is where we transmute skin and we're making it oh we're making its DNA not the most efficient necessarily but I think I got it the forbidden path this is a weird one 
by a strange set of circumstances, I met this guy named Tanner, who had been a movie producer in Hollywood. Even though he was pretty high up in the film world, he was completely convinced that interactive media was the future, so he wanted to get into computer games. He called me wanting to know what the new Sawayamas could do on a technical level. I think he appreciated the way I explained it, or at least tried to explain it, even when he asked about virtual reality or ray tracing or whatever other sci-fi buzzwords he'd learned. This is really cool. I, uh, I think I'm just gonna exit the game for the time being. I think, I think I'm good, at least for now. I, I think we've seen a decent chunk of this game. Oh, and we have a limited amount of disc, maybe. Uh, so I might have to actually clear my hard drive out before I can play every single one of these games. But honestly, I'm having a blast. The Steed Force Hobby Studio is a ton of fun. I'd like to give it another shot where I actually try and pay attention and color things appropriately before I build it. But honestly, just the act of building it was kind of fun anyway. Uh, Dungeons and Diagrams is a really interesting alternative to uh, Picross. I wish I understood what I had done wrong on that one section. Because once I, I kind of reached that solution, I was having trouble figuring out how to come up with more. Oh, eject disk in use. So maybe I can actually get another disk or disk drive uh, for some more space rather than uninstalling things and having to wait. I don't know. Either way, uh, so for now, Last Call BBS is, is available on Steam. It's been out for uh, out for a day, uh, two days actually. It looks like came out on July fourth. I was obviously on obviously I was off on vacation, so I didn't actually um, I didn't get the the chance to cover it until now. But I really enjoy it. Apparently, there's also a PvP mode somewhere in here, which sounds kind of interesting. But for me, I. I had a good time. I might actually play more of this, probably on my own, just to kind of zen. Because, like, the solitaire is an enjoyable now that I understand how it works. And, like, here, let's just throw us on display capture for a bit so you can see some of these other things. Like, what the heck is this? I have no idea. Uh, this looks neat. It almost looks like a block breaker kind of game. Uh, 20th Century Food Court also looks like solitaire, but different. Oh, that's the other one. And then this is that weird flesh path game that I was just playing that, sure, why the heck not? And honestly, so much more. I don't think it gets as deep as any of the other Zactronics games. I almost wonder if this is a compilation of games that specifically they had wanted to maybe make at some point along the way. And then kind of due to, you know, the studio potentially ending uh, they were like well we can't make these the way we wish we could have so instead let's just uh kind of demo out a bunch of them and have some fun and i don't think that's the worst idea in the world frankly uh let's see i'm only mildly paying attention to this i shouldn't be playing um i shouldn't be playing solitaire because it's a little distracting all of my black sixes are accounted for. Well, I'll see what I can do. I can move some things around at the very least. Okay, so what what was I going to say? What am I saying? I am saying words and things, and I'm not doing a good job of it. So, uh, last call is 20 bucks. I think it's solid. There's so much ingenuity in here, and it's a bit of a shame that this is their last game, because I could see almost every single one of these being spun off into its own standalone game that's like a ton of fun. I'd love to play the Gundam Builder, um, but with the ability to like take it in 3D and take a look at the parts and parts and move them around, but with like a crunchy pixel filter so it still keeps that same vibe. I think that would be really cool and it'd be even kind of fun if you could like run around and fight with them or something or I don't know, probably not. Uh, and then uh, the Flesh Path is, or the Forbidden Path is a little weird. But uh, Dungeons and Dra Diagrams had a ton of promise, you know, that'd be a fantastic mobile game, frankly, and just so much more. But with all that said, we've come to the end of our time. So if you guys like this video in any way, shape or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games, especially the Zactronic games, I'm going to sit down and play through the rest of them just to see if I can see if I can crack them. I know I had some friends that were really struggling with one or two and they were like actual programmers. Almost all of these games are programming games. So that's, uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I think I'd be fine as long as I'm not doing commentary because puzzle brain is not commentary brain. 
anyway, uh, so I guess with all that, uh, leave me a like, uh, question mark, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I don't know, my outro is gone. So is my voice. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.